So in other words, there will be another indictment I, and you'll I, think there'll be I, Americans I so. yeah. involved. I wouldn't be surprised if, for example, this week on Friday, not knowing anything about it, but Friday is the day that the grand jury indictments come down. What so the investigation right now, yeah. but I do think also if anybody from the Trump family, an extended family, is going to be indicted, it would be in the final act of Mueller's investigation. You know, let's be specific. This is really good news for a lot of people around Donald Trump. Well, the day of reckoning has arrived and the media isn't taking it too well. Over at MSNPC, they're in tears. And over at CNN, they're clinging to hopes of mystery indictments for crimes they haven't even made up yet. The levels of delusion and denial that we're witnessing here are certifiable. Ken, my biggest question, and I'm going to have this along until somebody answers it. How can the president be pointed to as leading collusion with Russia of aiding a Russian conspiracy to interfere with our elections if none of his henchmen, none of his children, none of his associates have been indicted. It's pretty simple, Chris. Everything that you people have been spewing for the last few years has been completely made up. You manufactured a conspiracy to explain how you lost the election and now it's blowing up in your face. You people literally thought that Trump was a Russian agent. How utterly deluded do you have to be in order to accept that as a real possibility? It just further proves that the media is more interested in advancing a partisan agenda rather than just reporting fact-based news. Because we know about the meeting in Trump Tower June of, uh, of 16. We know about the meeting in the cigar bar with Kel Kalemnik. We know, uh, my God, we know about all those meetings with Kisselak at the Republican convention in Cleveland. All these dots we're now to believe don't connect. Gee, Chris, maybe that's because the media misrepresented all of those stories. For example, the hotel meeting story that amounted to nothing, we find out later that there was four representatives from Fusion GPS there. That makes it seem like the entire thing was a setup. We don't know that it was a setup, maybe that'll be in the report, but it just goes to show how people like Chris Matthews had a narrative and stuck to it despite all other information that was available. He makes it sound like the hotel meeting was some sort of slam dunk, but that just isn't the case. That's why there aren't any indictments. Like I said, we're going to have to wait and see what's in the report. But CNN, MSNBC, and all these other networks don't exactly have the greatest track record. After all, many of them are currently being sued for one of these fake news stories. And all of them willingly help Jesse Smollett perpetrate his hoax. The common thread with all these stories is that they all have partisan political motivations. The biased reporters want the stories to be true, and so they only report the information that confirms that. Our, our, our job tonight um, as a country, sort of, or at least what everybody in the country is going to be doing tonight, is, is trying to figure out what it means that the report of special counsel Robert Mueller has finally been submitted. <laughs> Do you see that? She's crying. It's like election night all over again. Journalists don't cry. A journalist is not emotionally invested in their reporting. This person, Rachel Maddow, is a DNC operative who is heavily invested in this story. Not just because their credibility is online, but because they're trying to get Democrats elected. The Democrats and the media are still holding on to hope. Just as I and many others predicted, as soon as the Russian collusion hoax was debunked, they would simply move on to a new manufacturer scandal that they could use as a weapon against Trump. Just as they were all so certain that Russian collusion indictments were right around the corner, now they're putting all their hopes in these SDNY investigations into Trump's business dealings. The most hilarious thing about all of this is that these people are all hinging their hopes on reassurances from Senator Richard Blumenthal, who who's most known for lying about his Vietnam service. There is a strong possibility of additional indictments, including President Trump's family. Well, one of these anti-Trump resistance news sites is actually ordering opponents of Trump to turn off the news, saying, quote, there are obviously more indictments coming. They'll just come from places like SDNY as opposed to Mueller, which we've explained all along. Turn off your television. Stop posting inaccurate, no more indictment responses in my timeline. You're 100% wrong. What we're witnessing right now is a slow motion version of what we saw on election night. Right now, they're in the denial stage, but soon that will give way to grief. One thing is for sure, this is a bad precedent being set by Democrats that when you lose an election, you simply try to imprison your opposition. Does anybody believe for a second that the Democrats or the media will go along with any of this if the tables were turned? Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, PayPal, or Subscribestar. You can find the link in the description or in the pinned comment.